Hello. It's loading here. Yes. Oh, you can see. Okay. Uh, welcome to the Tier List Podcast uh, for this month of August. Today with me, Ryan and Ropalm. Uh, or beloved Dark couldn't make it. So we're going to do this, uh, the three of us. Uh, so we, we start with Utility. Uh, no, nothing much to cover there, so I guess that's fine by me. Hops update. Someone wanna mention something <laughs> about it? Uh, yeah, the Hops update was like pretty whatever. Uh, the X was really good last month, yeah. but uh, like the new nodes quicker and natural damage. It's just like some nice quality of life. I think for, uh, for first state is you know always yeah. good to have, right? Uh, First aid is for sure his best node. Uh, it's the one I would probably always run. I uh, don't think it's. I think you have any my, reason to yeah, drop it. All my builds uh, use it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the safest kind of insurance, right, of other things, and it's not especially expensive. You can take it whether you play fast or slow. Yeah, it, it's generally gonna be more healed than healthy healing, unless you're long fight, and cost a lot less. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the EX also made like uh, adrenaline an actually yep. useful node because before you didn't have much reason to sync with Hop besides some more <laughs> free to play content where you use Hop sync for damage. Mm -hmm. But uh, and the final node is the super effective up node, which is, which is fine if you want to kind of damage on CS or whatever, but yeah. Yeah, um, it's okay. Uh, type people, Hop, yeah. Hop is one support that can do a bit of damage, like a champion beat. So yep. it's fine. Totally. So we just went with like, he did bump a bit with the X last time, and we weren't like we, you know, he didn't bump really because of the greed update. We're just like readjusting. It feels a bit smoother than Hilbert and. Jasmine, so we're fine with this position. Uh, nothing much to say, honestly. Uh, do we have new? Oh, yeah, we have EX Marty. I don't think we need to extend too much on Marty. Uh, she gained. She doesn't really get like much increment off the X because she doesn't have any EX scaling kind of. <laughs> Sync effects like yeah, catalyst or synchro healing. Didn't I am a bit loath, I mentioned, to consider her an equal to I would say Rosanta primarily. Roxanne is a lot more liberal, but yeah. Essentially it just makes her a lot more flexible in a sense that she isn't reduced to Yeah, just the speed but the speed uh, rotations uh, at least more, yeah. You can get the EX support effect. Um yeah. Nothing too much. Uh, she did bump. Like well, Ingo didn't months. move. Uh, yeah, Ingo no, didn't no, move. Forgot Ingo because... got his expansion. Oh, so yeah, we forgot. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, uh, the expansion is. Yeah, no, very no, unfortunate. Yeah. Sorry about because that. Because Dioni got hit and heal and Sandslinger. Those are the only real yeah, good things he got. What baffles me is that they actually made both Stalwart and Unbending as expensive as Sunny Disposition. Yeah. And <laughs> I know. It's like, what the hell, man? Well, I think a decent tile still is a hit and heal. Although, yeah. it might also be somewhat uh, annoying sometimes for some people because it kind of uh, reduces your Sunstorm duration uh, by, you know, virtually. But I would, I would still tend to consider it uh, for. Well, it offsets the sand ship, and it also helps yeah. with gauge to some extent, right? Because of <laughs> animations. But yes, delaying sand is a valid criticism. Yeah, of but longer animations. I, would, I would still kind of take it most of the time. It, you know, it's based on fast rotations regardless, so I think, I think that's fine. But yeah, pff, nothing game-breaking. Like, uh, if you want if you need like attack drops, use maybe. Slap. Yeah. I don't know. Sad expansion, but Ingo is still a good pair anyway, so <laughs> didn't change much. Yeah, uh, yeah, good point. I did forget about him. 
that goes to say how uh, bad it is. Okay, uh, nothing else changed too much. I think we had a good uh, rehaul last time, so it, it didn't really move that much. Good. Um, let's not waste too much time. Hybrid or DD? DD is easy, yeah, as you say. There's not a lot of stuff there, and the, the stuff that we do put there are a lot more simple, which are um, okay. Olympia. Dresden. Yeah, only. I think the bird buff is that it. Like, is, is there oh, one yeah, more new DD? Yeah. Uh, maybe just slightly before. I don't want to waste too much time on distribution and stuff. But since it's somewhat relevant, there was a bit of a reshuffle in S plus, considering how much we value the range of damage versus the utility of sync pairs. So you can see a uh, Lear did drop. Uh, and Lucas also uh, joined this way, while uh, how is she called? Liza uh, gained a bit of uh, appreciation to keep her separated, and Lance stayed in, uh, joined the red subgroup. Uh, I wouldn't say this change occurs because we place higher priority <laughs> on range or PP, but just better associations with. The more brute stuff that we put above, namely lands, yeah, yeah. like Hilda, rather than saying I mean, oh, uh, utility is strictly worse. No, than yeah, yeah. No. you're right. That that's not exactly what I meant. But like throughout the list, you can see this is always the you know uh, do you value the son of Erika versus a bit more damage there. So we just kind of adjusted. Uh, still means their utility is valuable, but you know uh, sometimes just being brutal <laughs> uh, can lead you to a better st spot yeah it's what we talked before the s plus and s tier for our damage tier is overall like really yes. close besides the red subgroup of uh, s plus yeah yeah, yeah the, you'll notice this one. i sometimes get questions uh, it's a good point questions about oh why this pair has a difference between this on any of the least sometimes you have some tiers uh, like this these two are a good example the power level is very very close there is a lot of units there but they are all very very close uh, we just have to spread them visually but at the end of the day everything is pretty much broken anyway <laughs> so yeah uh let's move forward with uh olympia i guess the, the PP machine. Despite Olympia being an attack, she is one of those decks that you could just call a striker with a single target sync move, essentially. <laughs> because, <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, storage power is like <coughs> extremely strong. It's really absurd damage. You can do like more than Lear himself. Uh, she has some decent self buffs. Uh, she can survive nicely because she gets plus six uh, evasion on entry, and she also max out her special defense. She is gauge efficient out of those two gauge moves. Yeah, I think our, and, our tech aspect why they put it as a tech is because like she has that kind of tank aspect, kind of that you yeah, can yeah. try to abuse, which is which is always a, a good you know. Extra bonus for a DD uh, survivability, but uh, yeah, yeah. Keep going. But it's basically that she has, she can self buff, she has good survivability, and she has good damage. It's very straight to the point. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's very. Yeah, she's like probably one of the rawest definitions of stat track in recent times. Like it's all she does, you know, being a ball of stats and having evasion utility, but very efficient, <laughs> very straightforward. I am loath relative again to the end pass location, but same same sub same subgroup is fine. Yeah. I think the consensus still consensus, sorry, uh still would consider her more rising than dropping regardless. I mean besides you being a bit lower, uh from what I see Ropalm and Dark are pretty high. Yeah, she can uh, rise because again yeah. it, 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 she's just raw and very efficient just that relative to um Keldio slash SCT Antha who yeah. has a similar design but like a different kind of way of going about it. Yeah, Not she's sure more if she's brute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, but we'll see. I think it's a safe starting spot, you know. Uh, I mean, yeah, let's be honest. If you pull for her, you're gonna do tons of damage. Good, say, chick uh, damage dealer. So, yeah, have fun with her. Uh, uh, also, I just want to add that uh, I saw some people confused about her damage because we also have another search power user in Bianca. Mm -hmm. But uh, the raw stat difference and uh, the fact that Olympia has a better multiplier when Smart Cookie means their search power is like quite different yeah, damage. Yeah. So don't also, associate them just out of having the same move. Exactly. And also, as an extra point, uh, this build doesn't showcase it, but. <clears throat> Most uh, Bianca builds will aim for some, you know, utility tiles and stuff. So you will generally not have all the stored port tiles, while no. uh, Olympia can re get it. And it's only plus one, but it's plus one multiplied by all the <laughs> all the shit. So it's quite a lot at the end of the day. And yeah, she has 438 special attack. Yeah, in practice, Sarge Paul plus one is actually plus 12 exactly. out of the <laughs> yeah. nation's fire, so it's a huge chunk of damage added. And yeah, once again, our multiplayer is like, super easy to set up. It's literally press, kind of mind, and you're, you're good. <laughs> uh, cool. <clears throat> Let's... Uh, next one will be Dr Drasna, I, I believe. Drasna. I guess I'll talk about Drasna. Yeah, go ahead. I think... Drasna has this issue whereby people are called the Lucas Syndrome, right? Where a lot of the justifiable range is dependent on hitting for super effective damage. <coughs> I think the most unfortunate quality is that she scales quite poorly. Like she has no real reliable scaling beyond Toxic Power 3 and Villain Toxin Flight, which means that she's usually confined to like the second DPS role because her best quality is how efficiently she sets up with her TM sharp entry instant plus four, plus three, um, ramp up to round it off on toxic means there's a two turn rotation. But the fact that she requires poison to even do remotely decent damage at all is an issue. It, it, it means that she has to either poison each individual target. That's of an issue in LG, but in MMCS, it usually matters more. And it, it combines yeah, you to either using variety this... Agatha or yeah. This aspect of th those units that have a multiplayer, on, you know, uh, but they can only apply one target per one target. Most of the time, if you play kind of offensively, you can probably just skip doing the sides and just, you know, focus on the, the mid. But still, that's that's a very like criticism you can have. Well, depending on the on the multiply, it's not that big of an issue. Like for yeah. instance, the problem is a lot less of a problem if you run something like Oleana or Iris that do it for you. Yep. But Sludge Bomb is not particularly powerful relative to Draco Meat, right? I think that's where the poison problem becomes more apparent. You have to we have well, like technically you can like, poison with someone but still press Draco Meteor if you want. <laughs> you know that it's it doesn't Yeah, which is essentially just Agatha, yeah. Mm -hmm. Realistically in a cohesive composition. But like you have stuff like paralysis that is very widespread, that's a lot very easy to apply and Confusion as well, arguably, with the best supports applying it. Like, those steroids are a lot easier than poison. But yeah, very straightforward. We put them, we put them with, like, the other SC reliant stuff, maybe Gloria and underneath Alistair, which is also yeah. a bit similar would, in terms of the design. Just to clarify, I wouldn't call uh, Alistair and those two, like, SC reliant, but they are SC beneficiary more than reliant. Uh, Drasna still work off type, but she really has strong uh, well, incentive to run. Gloria out. is, but Alistair okay, and yeah. Sophocles aren't. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, Mostly okay, just yeah. Gloria, yeah. yeah. Still, she's gonna perform uh, off type, and you know, for most people that like on type, uh, at least she has two different typing that you can use for her. So, the toxic drop itself is also quite nice, actually. It's an underrated thing. In CSMM and LG, I think the drop itself is quite good. With, uh, like, uh, it's an M4 feature was... What yeah. are you talking about? I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. The drop, the drop. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. hit poison, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's why I highlighted the tile. Uh, it's a good, like, I mean, that's, you know, between Toxic and those type of tiles, I think that's why she's tech, technically. Is she? Is she tech? 
cheese stack, right? The tag, yeah, yes. it's a cheese stack. Uh, good, good, good tile to use. Uh, unfortunately, on LG, poison is bad. That's that's <laughs> not the. It's not bad, but it's often building resistance. It is very commonly resist. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but hey, uh, good, good place. I think uh, we were all almost always capping between Alistair and Gloria, so. Good spot. Uh, I personally prefer Drazna to Arister, but uh, yeah, you Drazna do. does have better damage and uh, mm -hmm. better setup. Yep. But uh, Arister still has the max move at least. Yeah. And, yeah we, um, we there's push. also one thing that Drazna has that I don't think see much use current, but does have the potential in the future, in the future which is the team down to the passive she got. The team yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, the team downness, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was that's what I was highlighting. I didn't uh, catch it, but yeah, yeah, that can be that can be helpful. Like, I don't know. For now, I don't see a comp where you stack. Maybe you can. I don't know. Whatever. But yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think it's nice to have in some cases. Like I mean, for it's instance. always better to have this than straight dauntless, right? <laughs> you know, it doesn't hurt uh, to have... Yeah, like if, it... if, you, if you had to run dauntless, her, her output would be a lot worse. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's good that she has this, yeah. Yeah, uh, like if we ever got a doubt, we will get uh, some Dragon's Own Plus weather support <laughs> to... It would be a godsend for Xenia. Xenia, yeah. As well. yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Xenia really, would really like that, yeah. yeah. That, that compression. All right, cool. Um, that's it for Drasna. We can talk a bit about the Berg update. Uh, There's also Callum, actually. I forgot to mention. Yeah, but he's you know. Yeah, I'll talk about that later. Uh, yeah. By the list. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm I'm gonna go ahead uh, with this one. It's you know kind of your your usual update. Like you get a bit of multiplayer, a bit of cell sufficiency. One of the issue it gets is that. Uh, critical A is attached to a trainer move that honestly kind of suck. <laughs> uh, so it would have been better if it wasn't special attack. And then on the other uh, tiles, you get something like super duper effective, so it's very restricted to on type. And healthy healing is like okay, sure, but you know, I don't care too much. My striker uh, healing himself. And first brain is, is cool. It didn't change too much. Uh, basically, it gained a subgroup to differentiate him, you know, a bit higher than Ho and Morty, for example. But yeah, yeah uh, I, I, still... I think for Berg, I think what the grid does allow him to do is to have more salvageable damage running just like Sun plus Ingo. Yep. Because traditionally, he had issues compressing everything, whether it be drops with Sun Ingo or just drops with Sun and no Ingo or drops with no Sun and Ingo. So just Yeah I think it gives him a reliable like kind of fallback. Yeah like the yeah, Sun build the, the, without yeah. the drops. Yeah this this build yes I think this makes him kind of like reliable in some sense. I agree. Yeah. He always has this to call back on. Yeah. It is one of the, you know, we talk about bugs sometimes. Is one of the bug type that would appreciate having a per a bit different than what Ingo is, uh, you know, by virtue of <clears throat> being more physical oriented and not. He only provides the zone for. Yeah, him. most bugs will yeah. get a better beneficiary outside of Ingo if it's, it's like special kind of oriented. Alder, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, just noting, but not extending on that, that following on this, the tiers got reshifted a little bit, not too much, but uh, Looker got slight raise, uh, even though still the on type kind of uh, reliance, but uh, with all the other. Yeah, the goal was to kind of shorten the. Yeah, yeah with Gloria and Roxy as well, especially after all the other. Yeah. Uh, and then the list keep going, and we got Lodge Callum. Lodge Callum is kind of weird in the sense that he's very tacky for a striker because there's a lot of focus on inflicting burn and confusion. Burn. But yep. yeah, but I think the issue is like he doesn't 
apply either especially reliably and his teammates as well are a lot more stunted like for instance like you would run Mori for sun but then who applies burn for you unless you want to fish 30 percent by yourself and it's not aoe 30 percent like something like cold snap it's like individual 30 percent on each target so like who applies the burn for you is my main issue yep yeah i mean <clears throat> you know we are talking about kind of low tier bears <laughs> at, at this point uh i feel uh dark and myself were you know kind of you know just slightly above the your usual x yeah he has the range for it yes i think i think the saving grace is that he has the range and because um the way he scales i would say that his extra techie aspect that you are mentioning still deserves a you know somewhat of appreciation like you can you can burn you can confuse people that's I think I'd appreciate him a lot more if he had stopped hitting herself, but yeah. I think sixty <laughs> yeah, percent aggravation it gives him a lot more control, yes, and then but sixty percent on both thirty percent AoE is still pretty good I'd say. Yeah. I think it's it's you know, it's a the it's a decent pair for this range. Uh but let's be not too you know. Not the best lodge pair, but uh, yeah, still, still fine. He is a lodge striker, and lodge strikers rarely are that good of yeah. sites, Gloria. At least I prefer it quite uh, more than what May is. Uh, For me, it's better compositionally, but yeah, it's more fearful yeah, in the. Uh... For sure, but you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I get what you mean. Uh, cool. Uh, still cool to have. It's a free pair. You know, uh, have fun. We not gonna extend on it, but we figured uh, Noland would be a bit more fitting for a uh, damage dealer instead of hybrid, despite having staggering and defense crush. Uh, yeah, primarily because Berg is also there, right? That was something I mostly pushed. Yeah, yeah. Because mm, Berg has yes. more reliable drops as well and healthy healing and the ball. I mean, he yeah. has tanked reliably before in an LG context, so yeah. Yeah, but it's still. Kind of DD oriented, and and those are more like tiles that adds to you know is uh, is him as a unit overall. But uh, yeah, uh, not the best grid showcase there. But that's the, that was <laughs> what I had last time. Okay, cool. Uh, I think that's it for DD. Slight reshuffle on the bottom, but I don't really want to extend on that. But that's fine. I think we're good. So let's move forward with hybrid. Hybrid, yay. Uh, okay. So before people ask the question, because I know it it's visually impacting uh, that Lele was in Uber before and she seems to have dropped a lot. Nothing's happened really. We just figured it was a bit overranked to our liking. And uh, sync pairs like Irida and Hop are quite strong as well while providing uh, a bit more like utility to their teams. Still, fun well, I think pair. the guys of um, Lana slash Lele dropping is mostly because, yeah, in the context of the composition, yes, she's quite overloaded, but like in the context of a unit, I don't think she does as much. I think it's easier to inflate her strength yeah. due to how powerful psychic comps are, but as a unit itself, she's not I think a ba the like exclusive driving fighter, yeah. Her as a unit, she's, you know, quite great, like pretty, pretty straightforward, and you can inflate her a lot, as you said, with uh, your team comp. But then that, that that's about it. Like she's she's not. I mean she's S plus. Come on, <laughs> that that's still that's still totally fine. Cool. Um, let's let's go let's see it. who's below her to see how strong she actually yeah, is. Yeah, let's let's talk about this one for example, Liam. Uh, I think uh, Ropan, you you could be a good person to talk about him. Sure. Uh, Leon is a pair that I like quite a lot. He has two main ways to play. The first that people will probably look like at is B breaking swap, because breaking swap <coughs> swipe is his buddy move, and which tends to be the selling point, which makes things a 
pretty great debuffer in my opinion. A lot of people I saw compare him to Champion Iris. Uh, I think it's kind of a service to Leon to just say he's a better Champion Iris because he does a lot more than her. I agree, yeah. I, I can uh, get the, but yeah. know, not comparison, but it's like modernized Champion Iris. Yeah, if, it's dark says a modernized version for current power standards. If you play him on B Breaking Swipe, but he also has a lot more <laughs> to him. Uh, keep going, keep going. Yeah, uh, so he just gets that... Uh, I think he gets five different debuffs in Breaking Swipe with Grit. Mm -hmm. It's the innate passive, the Grit passive, and the three stats that Breaking Swipe does. Yep, yep. Uh, it's quite the strong. And I also really like the, like the mass debuff that he can do, to be honest. But yeah. Yeah, uh, and the Breaking Swipe, despite being a buddy move, it's almost like a common move on steroids because the mm -hmm. activation condition is just used in any move. Literally, it's, it's you... not a condition, right? It's like, okay, <laughs> I press my... Yeah, it's just a justification to use a, a custom move instead of <laughs> an existing move. Exactly. Uh, and my preferred way to play with him is with Dragon Darts. Dragon Darts is very, very strong move. And you still get the the buffs with uh, the grid on five or five is pretty nice for him because you get minus two defense and it's still uh, two random debuffs. His damage is quite high. It's the only problem is that Dragon has even higher mm -hmm. DPS. Yeah, that yeah, may make people look down on him, but don't. Underestimate him. Dragon does more damage than most strikers. Right. I think realistically, we want skills when you factor in drops. It helps him in the long game for both durability and due to defense drops and stuff. Yeah. I think that I mean, should be factored in. <clears throat> when like he's not as efficient as Arena or Lance for yeah. fast, but I think she's better for slow contexts in general. When you talk about like uh, top, top tier Dragon Strikers, okay, but he has a lot more to it while. Not being that far, uh, kind of range-wise, you know, when you can you can burn, drop the defense, you can nuke or not nuke. <clears throat> he has max move. Like people tend to forget, you know, max move is always a powerful, you know, burst. <laughs> yeah, the ability uh, to burst. Yeah, external yeah, burst. Yeah, and uh, it even helps him if you want to set up some packing order or any other attack drops because. Mm -hmm. You get the breaking swipe and the max air wind does offer minus two attack, which I think is often forgotten about. Yeah, yeah, it's it is it is. Uh, I agree. That's why I was showcasing that. No, we re appreciate his uh, like uh, versatility, and I think you covered it well, uh, starting with the B breaking swipe that people probably saw first. But uh, let's not forget about the dragon darts that is a bit more damage deal oriented, but still with a good. Uh, pack of utility. Uh, he also, he also has, you know, impair views and bursting blows for some reason. Like, you know what I mean? Like, okay, cool. It's can, a top tier or, uh, legendary gauntlet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, okay, cool. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take yeah, it. both of the Galapagos are heavily gauntlet orientated relative to rules, and even Oliana, who appears to have underperformed in LG yeah. despite the utilities. Yeah. Well, I think he's fantastic on LG, but he's still, you know, or Blist is a more, bit more weighted towards 3v3. Uh, people tend to, sometimes people forget or don't understand why. This is arbitrary, so that, that's how it is. Uh, I can't say much more. But he still performs very well, in my opinion, on uh, stuff like Master Mode and stuff. Uh, because quite a good burst. He can set up debuffs for people or just pew pew the opponent <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's about it yeah uh and just to clarify like i see a lot of people uh, equating uh, legendary gauntlet performance to solo in legendary uh, mm. arenas mm -hmm. leon is not a good unit to solo legendary arenas but he absolutely destroys most of them just with a uh, one partner so yeah one partner <laughs> I don't think being good. I, in a... I would say he's better than most uh, units with like seven solos. Yeah. Don't. I think in the vision. Just to clarify, some people might, you know, if you have a list that is based on solo, whatever. I think we there is that in the community, which is great. But just to clarify, when we talk about LG performance in our list, 
we mean as a unit, you know, not necessarily playing to play solo, whatever, just, you know, you're going for a long LG run. Is this unit going to help you a lot or not a lot? Well, obviously this unit is going to be fantastic. Just bring one partner and you have a free stage, basically. Yep. So, yep. Agreed. Uh, that's cool. Uh, seems like we're all pretty hyped about him. I should pull for him, actually. <laughs> Let, let's uh, do that another day. Gloria! Gloria! I think Gloria has had a very interesting ride through reveal to how she came on the play. I think people initially were very hyped about how she was an external source of three different rebuffs and the Libero design. I think the design itself is excellent, I think, in terms of creativity and in practice, but I think the permutations for LG specifically, especially with the flying build, has been probably what has been put to use most often recently, like because of bounce, the ability to use three bounces and then sink immediately, refill the bounces with piercing blows and Essentially, kind of almost foolproof most LAs without risk. Yeah. Is and quite talking about awesome. solos, like for people that like it, she has the ability to solo. Uh, I don't know how many, but you know. 10, 10, so it's okay. 11. Yeah. No, it's oh. 11. They oh, 11 already? have done a, a Cresselia. Oh, right. Yeah. Damn. I should be able to do Cresselia because, yeah, I just dodge everything. Yeah. Yeah, she also uh, has like soft tank capacity, right? With things like like the fighting can heal, she has things like damage guard, regen. I think fighting tends to be the less useful mm -hmm. relative to the performance of flying, and fire usually has a lot more burst, uh, a more efficient nuke, and passive much stronger partners. But yeah. fighting itself, yeah, I think has the thing is, trail. if I play fighting, and that's why people might be wondering why there is no Singrid, I don't have a specific build for fighting because, like, you know, just. Just take your damage-oriented one and, you know, switch a few tiles that form a bit more high jump kick, but doesn't change much, you know, the usage uh, compared to fire, for example. Uh, uh, yeah, it's mostly the bounce that has some dedicated green grid yeah. nodes, but uh, the other two don't dedicate too much on the grid. Mm -hmm. It's just generically useful for all builds. Yeah, it's less indiscriminate. I think what's interesting about Gloria was, was I believe there was a time where we thought she would be probably the, the most the most powerful, most well-received unit. And then I think I've noticed a lot of people kind of questioning why she was kind of in that position that we put her in, I think relative to, I think, Hilbert in particular. I think, personally, I think she's better than Hilbert, possibly by subgroup, but I think Hubert has his advantages, namely like area of effect distribution with ripple effect metal sound, the ability to actually divide her rebuff, his rebuff, and which I think is glorious because it's true, which is she can only apply rebuff on one target. Um, it's not a bad thing necessarily, but like relative to other rebuffers that have more liberal distribution, that is a flaw. Well, I also and want to transition on that and follow up um, sorry for me to repeat some people are you know asking why and that, that that's totally fair again our uh, weightage of game modes still favors 3v3 and the problem with our rebuff situation is not only that you you can only apply on one target that, that could be fine in itself but also her herself her strong burst is reliant on keeping rebuff on someone so she has that weird scenario on like MM or whatever high score battles. Uh, she would facilitate a lot cleaning the mid. And then you're kind of left with the sides that you're kind of not struggling to kill, but you know, you're like, oh, uh, my god, that's just a matter of do game too much play, anymore. right? <clears throat> yeah. I think it's just a matter of gameplay because like she can facilitate EX strikes just fine. But, yes, like, for sure. But they, they, like you can argue, however, that Gordy already does that, and arguably better because he he can actually abuse, like burst, with the rebuff with his max flare. Yep. He compresses both uh, rebuff distributed rebuff and sun, unlike Gloria, and has ramp as well. 
So she's an option, but not yeah, something Yeah, it's, it's an option. That, that's why you run the unit as a whole, and she has that option. That doesn't mean she's the best pair at that option, but it's a valid option, so that you know that that's fair. Uh, and you can do that. Yeah, I'm just mentioning because like, types. some yeah. people treat it as if I rebuff is new. Yeah, but we already have that with Gordy, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, I wanted to add. Like, I think Gloria is very clever balanced because I think she's useful for all of her three types, even on 3v3s, but I don't think she outclasses the other options. Yeah. Like, for Fire, I personally prefer SSMA over Gloria, but Same. Gloria still has her own niche. I prefer Bia for her fighting, but again, Gloria does things that Bia doesn't do. And uh, flying as well, you have a more offensive option compared to Skyla. Yep. Yeah, and flying is even more specific than other pairs, so it's kind of a new addition, new addition in the game. Uh, I agree, it's, it's a good balance, like a versatile pair that won't outclass uh, the top tier ones in all those options. But like, if you're working on a restricted roster, uh, it's great to have a zinc pair that can fulfill a lot of different uh, options. Uh, yeah, she's I... not a direct power creep, she, but she still holds her own against yeah. all of the others. Yeah, very successful uh, type of design, I agree. Not that we recommend pulling for it. You pull for whatever you want and there is any coming, so, you know, guys, <laughs> uh, do whatever you want with your gems. Uh, not my problem. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's it. So, uh, speaking of gems, we move on to the Yander rival, yeah. um, Nemona. Wait, I was. You can go to... with it, Spark. I think you wanted to. Yeah. Okay, I can, but damn, she's <laughs> she's complicated to talk about. Uh, well, first of all, she introduced this new role. Um, I got some questions about Green, the yeah. new roles. So, just to clarify, it's when you ex the. Uh, the, the, the sync move as a... You essentially get the Dragon 3, yes. Yeah, so for a uh, sprint unit, I think that's what she, it's called. Uh, yes, it's she, sprint. Yeah, she would Adrenaline 3, basically. Which can be nice, it, it, it's great. But <clears throat> do you want to use it on first sync? Do you want to use it on second sync? But if you use it on second sync, the battle is probably over, so you don't really care about the, <laughs> the, the thing. And if you use it on first sync, that means you're giving up on a potential EX report, which is fine, once again, but she does provide a lot of sync acceleration. Uh, I think what's the issue with that is that you want to refresh your B double check, but at the same time, you want to accelerate your first sync kill, you might not have used B double check, and then you're left with only one usage. That's one of the criticism people would uh, put on her. But she, she, she still has a lot of utility, like even if you use it only once, uh, you know, you can go with staggering, she has a relevant nuke, and honestly our TM is quite loaded, I didn't catch at first glance, but last time that I checked, like, you know. Yeah, she essentially makes any ally a mini Ash, and it actually has an NPR on it, Yeah. <laughs> so if you're lucky, you can actually stack it if you're lucky, which is kind of insane. She's very complicated, but look at all the grids. <laughs> like she, she has a lot of various options. I think another criticism of Nemona is that while she does a lot, she can't do it all cohesively. Yeah, because that, she, that... She, she she works way too fast. She's way too excited to be able to properly process all of the TM, the X speed, her B double shock. The grid is too expensive to include. Uh, output drops, staggering, and etc. It's just too varied because it's too expensive. Yeah, there is so much things, but she wants to play super fast, so can she do all of those things? Generally not, which, which is fine. You can, well, it's you... characteristic of her, at least. So, thematically speaking, she is a pretty hyper character, and hey, mm -hmm. maybe this is their way of fulfilling that fantasy. <laughs> Yeah, I, and I think to go back to the new roles overall, I think it's an attempt to pseudo nerf text while giving, you know, kind of novelty to like, oh, I set a field or, oh, I accelerate the countdown. That, you know, that's a cool idea. Let's see how they go with, with that in the future. Uh, but yeah, 
honestly very exciting there uh, i feel because i can't wait to check all the various stuff i can do with her but uh at first glance we all kind of still uh, remain conservative and how she will flow like she won't like feel a very dedicated spot in the meta but she can do a lot of things for you so she seems cool yeah uh i uh, just to clarify we are assuming a four times multiplier for yes. double shock uh it's not confirmed but uh, the rumors indicate that it is four times mm -hmm. which makes her uh, her double shock like a improved max move in terms of damage because you still get the guaranteed crit instead of 80 percent and you can make use of master passes physical move up next and all those things yeah she has the so i, I went with some tiles that has the like physical boost <laughs> that's probably a very powerful beatable shock right <laughs> yeah uh it's like uh even stronger than bic beam which it, yeah i think is the second strongest move you're not comparing to b thunderbolt just to be clear uh, like you're doing course, less yeah. than half of b thunderbolt but b thunderbolt it's own beast so <laughs> yeah but yeah, that, uh, that goes to say, like, even men. if you only have one use of B-Double Shock, if you see it like a max move at the end of the day, like, sometimes we're happy to have just one max move. So, you know, that she plays fast, so probably that helps you clear the stage fast. That's that's what she wants to do, right? <laughs> on, on the subject of fast, I think her best comp is, I think, Callum plus SS Red, whereby I think there is a trick to immediately sinking twice in two rotations. Mm -hmm. Provided you time everything like perfectly. So, for instance, uh, if you head start everything and red max moves turn one, you get a turn one sync. But then you need to deny right side with Nemona sync. Mm -hmm. And is... that gives you enough time to queue the ramp on her TM as because the animation gives you yep. time. Yep. And then you can immediately ramp turn two after that. So, that's kind of what the goal is. Uh, when playing the normal, this is the turbo two turn kind of sync with red plus Callum. That's what I've thought of on top of my head, but that yeah, remains no. to be seen. We will see. Uh, I mean, you can keep accelerating with uh, yeah, the SST red uh, max move and yeah. We'll see, um, maybe uh, let's keep. Yeah, Rob, I'm sorry we <laughs> both interrupted you. Let, go ahead, uh, giving you some time. Yeah, uh, but like continue, uh, I think there's two main ways to play her. One is a more offensive uh, way with uh, Haymaker, Status Shock, and uh, I hate the move uh, name, uh, the passive name, it's Sync Move Physical Boost uh, <laughs> 9, yeah. uh, which is like just burst in the end because despite Nemona not being at attack, her Sync Nook does have tech levels of damage because she has fantastic attack, a innate multiplier, haymaker, static shock 5, you're not missing that uh, <laughs> e tech EX. 50%, yeah, she does still scale very well because of uh, a lot of multipliers and attack oh, gap. Uh, yeah. I forgot she's soften up. Cool, I guess. Yep. Yeah, the soften up is cool because it allows you to sync fast with her yep. uh, at a plus two crit, so yep. it helps. And uh, the other way to play her is like going or a more utility oriented build. Mm -hmm. I think you have that uh, one. I'm not I've sure. A lot but of, like yeah. A... yeah, it's yeah, essentially a layer with a broken TM, right? That's essentially what it is, because it's like, it doesn't wrap as much as Leah, but you essentially this make a pair of mini Ash, which is kind of this dumb. One, this one, I think, are kind of pseudo-utility oriented. This one is very... Yeah, there are some options. Uh, that one uh, is uh, utility oriented, uh, but like you can run staggering, uh, hostile environment, and uh, paralyze the, the buffs, yep. passive thing. Uh, which also is just like protecting your teammates and making them do more damage. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, she, she has a lot of uh, use. Yeah, we, we started actually talking about her with the criticism <laughs> before, like, I mean, she's still quite high. Going to the base. qualities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, she does have qualities to be there, like, uh, but why we were saying it this way is that we, we will really be looking at her 
to see like you know she can probably bump she can probably drop we don't quite know yet uh but again uh also we'll know on tuesday essentially let's not forget like she, she can play in a very strong archetype with sst red so you know that's <laughs> that's gonna be uh, uh you're gonna see some showcase with that i suppose Cool. Uh, anything to add? I think we spent quite a lot of time on her, but uh, anything to add outside of she's a good waifu? Yeah, I think we covered most of it. <laughs> I think I think at the end of the day, we have to wait and see because she's she's not a unit that much like some other attacks is very difficult to judge in practice, especially because it's a new role. And yeah. Yep. All right, another new role. Uh, let's go with a free sync pair that we are getting this month. Victor and Spectrier. Someone wants to. Who also has a a new role? Yeah, that, that yeah, that's that's what I was. Uh... Field role is it? Is it fourth field? Yeah. Yes, it is field. So I guess, uh, Robot, do you want to talk about it or should I? Uh, you can go ahead. Okay. Um, I think the new field role is kind of unique in that it provides a better version of the traditional kind of solar rise, wet calling, mm -hmm. dust kicker kind of passives involved with an extended duration. But I think one of the main criticisms is that the value you get from that sync, because in Victor's case, it doesn't scale very well is a different issue. And I think a lot of the criticism on Victor, despite being a free pair, is that is very incohesive. I think he has a lot he can do between max move burst, ghost zone, reflect, the ability to buff, special attack and crit of an ally, not just himself. He's but very I think utility he's, oriented, right? Yeah, but he also has I think his best mode is what's unfortunate about Victor is that ghost strikes, like EX strikes that are ghosts that are good are very uncommon. Mm -hmm. Because for like Turbo with a run for instance, like Brandon SS Brandon, Lilia, or Fantina with Victor, where you can sync turn two within the ghost zone duration and then max move with uh, yes. Victor to finish it off. Like, that's kind of his best mode fast. Yeah, because not, he also isn't his, very good yeah, solo. At all, right? Yeah, I think that is his best mode, ironically. I agree. Yeah, and yeah. that's what best justifies him over Cynthia sometimes. But I think right now it's just a bit difficult to use until we get those good ghosts. Because wasting the TM for wasting the sync for the zone extension is not necessarily ideal because of the value you get from it. Yeah. It's not yeah, my, very good. my criticism with uh, fields for, for now how they are uh, giving it is that most of the time I prefer having my un on demand setter and then use the EX support and crush everyone or just use an EX strike or nuke. So as long as We'll see how they do field in the future, but in Victor's case, one of the issue is that he doesn't have a specific scaling with his own sync. So if it, if I was doing like if if he had an innate multiplier or whatever, I could see the incentive for him to sync early and extend your zone to finish the battle. That that would be fine. But at the moment, you're pretty much syncing to reapply the zone. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of like Nemona, right? Where he doesn't scale like attack, but at least she has the output and the value you get from the thing. In this case, it's just extending the zone, yeah, which isn't exactly ideal. But yeah, it's still a free goal yeah, zone for people, you know, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, it's a lot more accessible than uh, a master yeah, yeah. and Cynthia, and like yeah. Lily barely counts as a ghost zone unit. Yeah. So yeah, I've seen yeah. people kind um, of. Sort of complain about about it, but like not everyone has Renegade Cynthia. Like you know, it's a free pair. Like you get a free ghost zone. Don't don't yeah. be too <laughs> don't be spoiled. Yeah, don't guys. be too harsh because it's a free pair. I think yeah. I think there are some units that also benefit from him, like maybe SS Corina, because of Haze, right? Mm -hmm. We can have pre blank slate everything for her, and I think that's nice, considering that they both also enjoy playing fast rather than slow. So yeah. Although, if I have to uh, kind of support some of the criticism, personally, that's that's mostly me. Uh, I think, and it goes also for Courtney. I think uh, I 
I would tend to prefer... It's Whitney, not Courtney. But... Oh, yeah, sorry, my bad. <laughs> um, I would prefer the, the three the buffers following to them, personally, but I mean, I think that that's fine. They're, you know, very grouped uh, in the same spot. But yeah, some people feel, seem like, oh, he's a bit high on the list. I mean, he's not that high. I mean, there's Courtney, Gordy, Whitney... Well, he can he's drop if he underperforms, right? Them, right? He's yeah. Not, he's not very much but he can drop if he underperforms, mostly. Yeah. I, I think it, rather than, also that's probably personal preference, rather than underperforming, it's me valuing those type of weird, I debuff, I sync nuke uh, type of sync pairs, but maybe that's just personal. Yeah, um, and I think that uh, field roles will get better in the future. Like, mm -hmm. I saw a lot of crit scenes that Oh, field and uh, sprint are just worse than the the other EX. Uh, while I do think the other EXs are a bit better than those, I don't think Victor is really showcasing the, the power of the EX. Yeah, it's, uh, it's most of the time there, they... So they're not gonna overload him uh, to start. Like, it's not a best showcase of the new role because he's free, so he's a bit slightly under-tuned. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we might get like yeah, other, uh, most other of the fields. time they introduce a new mechanic. Uh, like the the built-in units are not always the best showcase. Like we got uh, better Dynamax users than SS Leon. We got uh, better Tech X than SS Lee. Uh, mm -hmm. B moves being the main exception, but it is common for the first unit of a new mechanic to not be the best way to showcase it. Yeah, it depends on when and how they, like, you know, for example... Well, technically, B -move, B -move, when you mentioned B-Move, Wally was the first B-Move, and it wasn't that stellar either, right? It only got better as it no, became No, the more. first B-Move was Ash. Right, that, that's why I was about to Ash say. Ash first? Oh, it was Ash first? Oh, okay. Yeah, so that, that's why it was Annie and the, the Rats, so of course they are going to do a very strong... Oh, first, the Rats did first, first. okay, uh, yeah, my bad. Yeah. Like, all three of them had one, yeah. Yep. Uh, but, you know... Uh, on this one, like, it's not quite any yet, it's a free pair, so of course we're not gonna get the ultimate showcase of it. Uh, just to add slight few things on uh, Victor that we didn't really talk about. Quick note, uh, first of all, his TM is targeted, so that can be helpful as a kind of supporting uh, type of unit, instead of only self-buffing. And yes. second thing, well, yes, haze, you know, uh, Let's not forget, like, Cresselia and stuff like that. Haze is a decent tool to have uh, for some specific gimmicks. And, yeah, uh, nothing much else to add on my side, at least. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just one thing I want to add is that uh, you mentioned earlier the support uh, EX into a dedicated uh, zone mm -hmm. uh, unit. I saw some comments that I completely disagree with that, like, Oh, Field EX is better than Support EX because Support EX is a 2 times multiplier and the uh, Field EX oh. is 2.25 because you get the 1.5 times uh, sync buff and 1.5 times the zone. But, like, mm. no. Yeah, my, uh, my you scenario can still implies use Support EX with uh, another zone. Another zone, <laughs> right, exactly. I, the argument can hold between Support EX and no zone, but. The scenario we are describing is Sport X press zone. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I guess like Valid points, yeah. To, to 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 be kind of clear on that, well, there will be cases in the future where field might have more value than the X, notably if one, it has like other sync utilities attached to it, like adrenaline or just damage. Mm -hmm. And in Victor's case, in this case he works best with the aforementioned Brandon plus Fantina or Lily Combs and he's more or less future proof for yeah, the, 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 the zone on, on, you know, there are th those new roles, people tend to focus on the new EX effect, but uh, he has the zone on entry, so you can abuse that for other type of game plans and, and ignore his EX effect, right? So Yeah, more or less, yeah. Uh, actually, did we explain how uh, Field EX works for those who are oh, not yeah. aware? Because uh, I think yeah, we yeah, just yeah, talked about how, how good it was, but not how it's works <laughs> good I, I thought it was self-explanatory but uh, it seems like some people are confused so yeah just just to clarify at the time 
you sync with that sync pair because the EX effect is on that sync pair, so you don't sync with someone else or whatever. It will re-implement uh, your field effect, and then you have the extension duration of it. So it, it, it applies before your sync tri triggers, but at the time of your sync. And another quick kind of advanced mechanism, uh, you will still have the debut go zone, so it will run out at the time of your sync, removing quad Q opportunity if you go for a normal tree cycle, but it will still reapply the zone, uh, but you will lose quad Q. I'm not sure. If yeah, it's basically the guaranteed way to have a, a zone sync, which again is not the best with Victor because Victor sync is not the strongest, but will for sure be very useful for few, future field units. Yeah, exactly. Like, let's say you have an innate like the any other field setter. Well, at least you will have guaranteed field effect upon your sync. So yeah. Uh, good point. Good point. We, we should have clarified that uh, to begin with, actually. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, still a good thing pair to have for free. Again, you know, okay, not the most impressive, but we'll see how they go with those new rolls. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we're done, yeah, covered everything. Uh, did we? Yeah, I, I, I think so. Let, let me double check. Leon, Nimona, uh, minor update. Yeah, uh, let's see, the update had uh, Trainer Lodge, Kaylin, and Fennecke, regular scout, Olympia, and Drasna. Pair up Victor, Pokefair, Leon, Gloria, and Namona. Expanding Grid, Berg, and Ingo, Ingo and yeah. the X Marley. So that's all. Yep, yeah, perfect. That's all. Uh, and one last comment about hybrid. Uh, but again, not going to explain too much. Slight red distribution. The, the distribution was looking a bit like tough on the bottom tier. So we kind of rearranged it while keeping the. S plus and S tier wider by virtue of, you know, uh, I don't think those are quite detachable yet. We kind of want to see on those five, for example. So it was more accurate to keep it this way than, than forcing cascading down or whatever. Uh, so yeah, the distribution just slightly changed, but the orders are mostly the same. Uh, except for quick mention to Lizzie. I, Slight drop, uh, Robon. It's been for a while that you said like uh, she's a bit overrun kid on her side, which is a fair criticism. So we are meeting in the middle uh, instead of overranking or underranking. But she's still best girl. Cool. Okay. I think we're done. Uh, yeah, we're done. Any, Robon? Are you gonna pull for some units this month? Actually. I didn't ask you. Uh, I have almost no gens, so uh, <laughs> I am trying for dailies on Gladia and uh, Leon. Okay, okay. But uh, I don't Wait, think I was. What did you pull the month prior to that? Did you pull for uh, Leon? Uh, no? It it did. Uh, Leanna, right? No. No. Oh, okay. uh, it's just that um, I pulled for the Water Banner, the Lysandra and mm, Gladia. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, oh yeah, right. right, right, right. I did, but I got. Way too lucky. Yeah, like, I understand you <laughs> pull for um, Adaman and Irida, but then like what happened during the month where yeah. you supposedly pull? I think you pull on the water banner. Okay. Yeah, so the, it was more, two uh, units that I wanted, so I didn't get the sender, unfortunately, but I, I did get Gloria. Cool. Well, on yeah, my I'm, side, gonna I'm gonna pull for Nimona, so we'll see some showcase on my channel. Yeah, I'm gonna try for Nimona as well myself. Did Just gonna I see what happens. Told you to wait a bit. Wait, no? It's fine. Uh, well, uh, you do you, you do you. Uh, and I think after that, I, I meant yeah. for Leon rather than Gloria. So I like her, but I see myself using him way more often. So I'll probably try him. Uh, but for now, dailies, and we'll see. Yeah, one unit that I might pull next month that uh, uh, actually comes this month is SS Chris, just because, like, I almost have a full collection oh, of Master Fest, yeah. and uh, Chris is the only Master Fest I'm missing. Like I, I always forget but I will need a lot of luck yeah. in <laughs> next month. I always forget that you, you don't have uh, SS Chris. You know, I always view you as like, oh, Rain and Sun, you have everything, but no, actually, no. <laughs> cool. Uh, I think we can wrap it up, uh, unless there is any last comment. We are 
right yeah, we can wrap it up. one hour mark thank you guys for the great discussion and thanks everyone uh, who watched until the end stay tuned for more showcase and random stuff uh, and yeah see you next time <laughs>